It makes you realize just what you have back there on Earth. When Jim Lovell became one of the first astronauts to orbit the moon during the Apollo 8 mission in 1968, millions of people on Earth watched in awe. Apollo 8, Houston. It put the U.S. space program closer to landing a man on the moon, something it accomplished a year later. I run into people now in their early 50s and 40s who were kids when I made my flights, and they said, you know, you, you were the, uh, the, uh, the inspiration that uh, got me into being an engineer or a scientist or something like that. One of those inspired was Pamela Melroy, who became an astronaut and commanded the space shuttle Discovery. I think Apollo has continued to inspire generations of students, and I believe the space shuttle will too. But Lovell is concerned that without a space shuttle or a U.S.-made replacement vehicle, a new generation will not benefit from the inspiration and enthusiasm generated by a robust space program. I am a critic of the, of the way the space program is going uh, because uh, it's been a you know, major part of my life. I don't like to see it continue. I am afraid. I'm afraid that uh, everything is going to bog down. This is Mission Control Houston. A space shuttle contingency has been declared. The end of the shuttle program began in 2003 when the orbiter Columbia disintegrated while returning to Earth. All seven astronauts died. Pam Melroy was on the team that investigated the disaster. And I think the tragedy of Columbia was uh, such a scar for all of us. Uh, that I think there are a lot of people who believe that the shuttle was ultimately too flawed to continue to fly. Uh, I'm not sure if I necessarily agree. I do think it was time to move on and go on out of low Earth orbit. I think the mishap did um, at least remind everybody that it is a dangerous business. Another motive behind ending the shuttle program was the rising cost. NASA says the price tag for a shuttle launch is about $450 million. Level points out that the money funds jobs and spurs development on Earth. Not one cent is spent in space. It's all spent right here on Earth. And it's spent to do things that will result in new technology uh, for not just activities in space, but that, that, that spread throughout the entire infrastructure of this country. President Barack Obama unveiled his vision for the U.S. manned spaceflight program last year. It involves developing technology that will someday put an American on Mars, but not back on the moon. Melroy thinks that should be reconsidered. It's really hard to make a six-month trip without a little bit of practice. So the moon is kind of an obvious choice. An asteroid is an equally obvious choice. I think, actually, they have technical pros and cons. But I think that you're going to see before we make that giant leap, super giant leap out to Mars, we'll have to go practice somewhere first. President Obama's vision for future space flight also encourages private companies to develop the next generation of vehicles that will put humans in orbit. Right now, U.S. astronauts will have to rely on Russian-built Soyuz space capsules to get to and from the International Space Station. And they're charging us, what, $60 million apiece, but I kind of think that in the long run is going to be fairly inexpensive compared to all the money we're going to put into these private people to do the same thing. NASA recently awarded $75 million to Space Exploration Technologies, or SpaceX, to develop a successor to the space shuttle. Their Dragon capsule will be able to carry the same complement as a shuttle, seven people, into orbit at a time. SpaceX plans to fly its first manned mission into space in 2014, three years after the last space shuttle orbits the Earth. Kane Verba, VOA News, Chicago, Illinois.